If you're listening on podcast, be sure to tune in to our YouTube channel for more content. The link is in the description. Welcome to Wild and Weird Radio, a Wild and Weird West Virginia podcast. In 1947, a pilot by the name of Kenneth Arnold had the first modern sighting of what we now call UFOs. He described their movement as saucers skipping across water, and thus was born the term flying disc or saucer. The next month, the town of Roswell, New Mexico would become famous when nearby Army Air Base would claim it had retrieved one of these flying discs. But shortly after the historic announcement was made, a counter story published and discredited the entire find as a weather balloon. When researcher Stanton Freeman began to collect accounts from local witnesses and those directly involved in the recovery of an unknown object and possible occupants, it seemed a massive cover-up had been perpetrated. Eventually, the government would attempt to take control of the popular narrative and release two contradicting versions of what really happened at Roswell. What crashed in 1947? Join us as we try to dissect 75 years of cover-ups in this space special episode of wild and weird radio welcome back to wild and weird radio it has been a crazy week we do have some interesting news stories but we're coming up on a big anniversary and it's an anniversary that we've touched on every year but this year we're going to be covering a little bit more in depth and of course we are talking about the crash at corona the roswell incident and subsequent cover-up so um, before we go into that, remember, like, share, subscribe, go everywhere, anywhere there is wild and weird stuff, share it, like it, subscribe to it, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all of it. Go ahead and hit that notification bell too on YouTube. So that way, every time a new episode is loaded, you get an alert on your phone. Comes in handy because we do upload random videos at times that are special news alerts and we've got one here's a hint that we're going to be uploading soon so you definitely want to have that notification bell turned on to catch that and before we dive into the roswell incident we're going to tackle wild and weird news so let's go to the news desk and see what's up it was not a, it, it was a slow news week but there were some really big stories let's put it that way so what do you guys got because it it's been uh a really wicked week for me uh, so i haven't had a chance the only thing i've actually been following uh closely was the the cern thing and we'll talk about that closer like right at the end of the news yeah um i don't know i think mainly uh we we had some stuff going on well of course you know we just had the celebration there the anniversary of uh the kenneth arnold sighting let's not forget that yep. It's always a very important thing to recognize. Uh, I know we do Roswell Days every year, but it, you know we always try to mention the Kenneth Arnold sighting as well because you know that's where the whole modern thing kind of got underway, right? Um, I guess the first part of the news was we had that weird AI thing. Uh, Jess, it looks like uh, you you may be okay. You may have cons- you maybe can stand down. Uh, it looks like the uh, the lawyer has backed down from the case. Um, so this thing may not be considered, uh, possibly sentient, I guess, legally. So I don't know what that means exactly. I, I don't know what any of this means. Uh, so it looks like you can stand down just as far as it goes with the, uh, you know, getting ready for the, uh, robot apocalypse, but. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm still watching Terminator in training. So <laughs> I, th- I think that this yeah. thing, I mean, if it's really as smart as it, they're, they're saying this thing is, would you not think that. Uh, it would have possibly already uploaded a piece of itself somewhere as a, you know, as a, as a safe backup just in case they did off it. You know, I mean. Yeah, I, I'm sure that it has pieces everywhere. There's fail safes all over the place, so that's why we have to track these these entities down one by one and destroy them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's your job, Jess. That's your, our, yours. Our, yours. Yeah. Jesse Connors here. Yeah. 
Jessica. Hey, I, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I know. We, we're <laughs> we're happy to have you on our side. And, you know, we don't, we're not robots. So, um, I guess the next big thing, and it was kind of huge, uh, there was supposed to be this big uh, announcement the other night uh, live on uh, KLAS, and I actually tuned in for it, and uh, I was I was too early, apparently, and uh, then I forgot about it. Something happened, but the next morning I woke up, and there's the headline. Uh, we knew that they were going to announce this you know, mysterious... Um, partner who, who had uh who had worked on the uap uh task force and we have you know blew my mind uh, along with everybody else that we knew who this was hidden right in plain sight as it says uh it turned out to be travis taylor and this is a uh travis taylor if you guys don't know who he is he's a public figure as well as a world-renowned scientist but he's made multiple appearances on the last what 10 seasons of ancient aliens and a lot is of, one of a lot them, of seasons one of the main of hosts aliens. of skinwalker ranch he, yes yes uh he's the lead scientist on skinwalker ranch uh and he, you know everyone says you know his other shows well his other shows are uh, ancient aliens okay i mean there are other shows too but we know him from ancient aliens pretty much uh, yeah that's that was the first major paranormal show that he showed up on and then mm-hmm. because of his credentials that landed him in a few other spots. Uh, I think he's showed up on Unexplained a few times as well, too. But mostly he's been, he's been a, a player on Ancient Aliens and with Skinwalker Ranch. Well, he is affectionately referred to as the redneck rocket scientist. That's yep. him. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's amazing about this is, you know, he was deep mm-hmm. undercover. And if you have watched any of these interviews with the man, he's always said, you know, I've worked on top secret things before, blah, blah, blah. Never once did they have a clue that this guy was really working for the UAP task force. And here they are showing him all this videos and, you know, all this stuff. If you watch the episode of ancient aliens where he's dying, you know, he's going over and he's uh, kind of analyzing and diagnosing the, uh, the, the UAP footage from the Nimitz, you know, it's like, wow. Now that you look back at that, you're like, he knew what he was looking at. Yeah. And, uh, I think that it was a very, uh, just an amazing story. Uh, there's several parts of that that have been taken out. We've linked to those over on the uh, on the group, and I'm going to put those on the page as well on the forum. Uh, there's some very interesting parts of that interview. Yeah. Uh, you're going to want to listen to those, um, yeah, especially some of his backgrounds. And my favorite part is, you know, where he addresses the um, the debunkers, the armchair experts. Um, you know, we've, that and was uh, my favorite. That made part me of me also wonders um, if. George Norrie and the other guy were like trying to slide something in there on the sly when they named that latest book that they worked on Skinwalker at the Pentagon. I mean, that was just kind of maybe a little bit too on the nose. Well, I, don't know. <laughs> so, I, mean, I might be looking into it a little bit hard. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think that uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot that's going to be coming out soon, I should yeah. say. So this uh, is part of the slow roll disco- disclosure. So now that, you know, now that we know that he's been involved with these projects for so long, uh, he's been telling us about this for years now. So it's, this is, again, this is slowly turning up the heat. This is the frog slowly boiling in the pot. Um, and you didn't even realize it was happening. Yeah, absolutely. You, you've nailed it. And, and, you know, everybody got to know Travis and they got to like Travis and they got yeah. like to, to, you guys got to trust this guy because he is all about the data. He, he's not biased. He'll tell you right from the start. He was a skeptic when it came to the whole Skinwalker Ranch thing. So go watch those videos. Um, but if you actually watch the show, you already know. I mean, it, it's it's very, very fascinating. Let's just say that. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm pretty interested in seeing where this little this little train goes. Like like Jess said, it is a slow road to disclosure. And uh, we're, we're coming around the bend, I think, at this point. Well, speaking about coming around the bend, uh, CERN is firing up. By the time this episode airs, we are going to be on the 10-year anniversary or uh, within a couple of days of the 10-year anniversary of discovering the Higgs boson. Now... For those of you who might not remember, or might remember it as uh, the Biggs Hosen or something, 
<laughs> oh yeah, I see what you did there. I, yeah, yeah, um, right. I, I got it, you. That's the whole. The firing of the uh, this the Large Hadron Collider possibly ripped a hole in space fabric time and reinserted the new reality into our own. Berenstain, Berenstain, you figure it out. Um, they're getting ready to do it again. So start writing down everything. That's my advice. Write everything <laughs> down right now. So that way, come July 6th, after they fire this thing up on the 5th, we can go back and remember. Because it might just wind up being like the movie Memento, where <laughs> everything we once knew gets erased and replaced with something completely different and new. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too excited. I'm actually kind of nervous about this one. Yeah. Listen, it, at the, this point, we've had enough slings and arrows that I think we'll... We're yeah. just... I mean, everything could be on fire at this point. Everybody would be like, oh, look. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How about that? That's oh, well. par, par for the course. Yeah. Oh, well. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, now, uh, again, yeah, just, just really like the doesn't. first time they're doing the full symposium in a webcast format. Mm. Uh, so I'm curious if this is going to have just as elaborate as an opening ceremony as the previous event. Mm, I don't know. That was the opening of the tunnel. So I don't think they'll, they'll probably just turn this thing on and that'll be it. As far as turn it on, they'll just flip a switch. No, let's flip a switch and be like, okay, oh, we blew the fuses again. Let's shut down for five more years. <laughs> yeah. We need 30 million more dollars to fix that fuse. Someone, anyone that's kind of how these projects work. So, yeah. So um, it, it's, I don't know guys. It's, it's supposed to be bigger and better than last time. And I, I'm just yes. maybe kind of got my fingers crossed for we'll wake up on the 6th and there'll be dinosaurs. It could happen, I guess. Yay! Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You, you still have this dinosaur dream, don't you? I mean... I do, I, man. We got as close as we're going to get, I'm pretty sure. So we, we I know. You we know, probably did. The lychees are probably pushing it. Well, we actually um, got to work with dinosaurs. Well, you know, they weren't real ones, but... You know, oh, yeah, you're talking about the museum, yeah. We actually got to work with dinosaurs, just in a weird way, so... Yeah, it was <laughs> the uh, a dinosaur dentist. Dinosaurs. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely, painting and, and whatnot. But anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much the news, guys. Let's, uh, let's, let's go and uh, roll that and, and head over to our main story. So as we talked about earlier... This week's main story is the uh, Corona crash, the what Roswell. The, why do you keep calling it Corona crash? Didn't uh, look. I'm sorry, but you were warned ages ago uh, not to even use that word. So let's not use that word, okay? Let's let's call it what it was. That everyone <laughs> understands it by. All right. Let's do that. The Roswell incident and there. subsequent cover up. <laughs> yes, that's the one. That's the correct terminology. Yeah. Because that other thing is something completely different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally different. Totally different. <laughs> totally different. So, yeah, it's uh, the anniversary. What, which which year is this? This is the 57th? Are you insane? What Have you lost your... You know Pro what? I think they flipped the switch already. They might have. It was an early... It could be. Try your dyslexia. This entire episode is just going to be Ron just upset and angry that nobody I, has... I Good I knowledge am, about the incident. I am absolutely <laughs> appalled at this. These are these. <sighs> oh yeah, it was in the forties, wasn't it? Seventy fifth anniversary. Seventy fifth. There's your history. <laughs> so it's you know it's a big one, um, big. and they're actually having the festival again this year. Yes. So Probably. that's that's huge. Uh, it's a it's a great great festival. If that is uh, a, wrong, that, that's a good. Uh, that, that's a good sign that, that Mothman will actually happen. Yeah, uh, agreed. So, there you go. Agreed. Uh, carry on. So, this festival, if uh, <laughs> if you've never heard of the Roswell Festival, uh, mm. definitely check it out. Ron's actually been. I've never been. I've always wanted to go. Um, Dude, but yes, um, fingers fingers crossed here in the next couple of years, we will wind up there. Well, you have to remember, I was at, uh, that was, I was there a year after the festival started. So, yeah. You know, it, and it was still pretty big. I mean, you know, but uh, it's really grown now. I mean, this thing's monstrous now, so uh, which is great to see. I love these things. You know that this is yep. this is where paratourism was born. Yep. 
you know, Roswell is where paratourism was born, literally. And uh, it's just really cool to, to go out there and see that kind of stuff. So, but, so what t- tell us a little bit, Ron, aliens, since, si- aliens, since uh, you are the resident UFO expert right now nope. on Roswell, nope. Nope. Uh, nope. not an expert that, nope. that's working for the state <clears throat> government of West nope. Virginia on the UAP um, okay. trailer. And yeah, <laughs> so, that's it. That's it. Yeah, working out of the 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 metal metal little you know bubble that's trailer. What's this called? Doing. The, yeah. Yep. In a van down by the river. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, fill us in, Ron. Give us the rundown on the Roswell incident and the, the Roswell incident. How not to Gosh. cover up something. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. I like that. That's what we should call the episode: the Roswell yeah. incident. How not to cover up something because. Uh, literally, uh, this couldn't have been handled any worse, I don't think. Yeah, no, it absolutely not. I don't, I don't think it could have been. This was this was very early on in the in the process of the government covering up. They stuff were learning at the rate in which they cover up things. <laughs> right. Most is so they were very very new to the yeah. just psycho level of cover ups at this point. So oh, you yeah. have to at least give them a little credit. They they were just. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fresh at it, yeah. and you're not as as honed at doing it as they are now. So it was, uh, you know, give them a little credit there. It was a, it was a, it was a beta run, I think. Would be well, safe could, to say, right? Given given the time frame, like it wasn't like the internet where you can just press a button and cover something up. Now, once good this point, Joe, once this horse left the stable, it was out. And mm-hmm. then they had to like chase it down. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> well, the horse that uh, got out of the stable was something apparently crashed onto a ranch in, as you say, Corona, uh, New Mexico, about 50, 50 or so miles, something like that, north of Roswell, I believe, is where it's at. Um, I could be off. It's been a long time since I've been there, but <laughs> but um, it's either thirty or fifty miles from Roswell. But either way. Um, that would be uh, the whole famous Mike Brazel story. Mike was out there. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, a foreman on, on the ranch. It was uh, J.B. Foster's ranch. And he was a foreman. And he's out there, you know, kind of checking out some stuff. And he comes across this debris, supposedly. Now, depending on which story you read, because it, there are so many different versions of this, he either discovered that uh, that material sometime in the middle of June or the beginning of July. Because there are versions that say, well, you know, he found it on the, like July 6th or 7th or something like that. Um, but either way, he discovers this material. Uh, he goes out uh, and he tells um, Sheriff George Wilcox about this. And he had already heard stories about these blind discs. And we got to remember, guys, it's 1947. What happened just a month before this? That was the flying saucers. It was the kickoff for saucer mania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just had, you know, the Arnold sighting. And so flying saucers are in the news at this point. And uh, he starts kind of wondering, well, I wonder if that's what I, I got out there. Because he described it as kind of a foily kind of stuff. And there was clumps of it all over the field. So he tells George this. And uh, George Wilcox gets a hold of uh, the Roswell Army Airfield. And he has, uh, I believe it's Colonel Blanchard, uh, yep. who uh, is the commanding officer at the time. And Blanchard sends out Marcel. Um, you know who that is, Major Jesse Marcel, uh, the famous Jesse Marcel now. Um, he comes out with the crew and they find this material, bring it back, and they're examining this material, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I believe someone gets the idea, well, this is a crash disc. We've got one. And uh, the press release is released. And this is the famous headline that you've you've seen, that you've heard, you know, that uh, the, uh, the, the uh, I guess, the Roswell Army Air, Airfield. RAF. Uh, yeah, they're in, they're in possession of a flying disc. Okay. So this was, I believe, July uh, 8th is when that story ran. Uh, immediately. It is retracted on July 9th. They have a picture of Marcel now posing with debris that is clearly a weather balloon. 
um, which he, he runs with and says, yeah, it's Weatherblunt, which he did for a very long time and until on his deathbed, he said that was not a weather balloon. His son has come out of furthermore and, and stated, you know, that was not a weather balloon. Uh, and pretty much this is how the whole cover up story started. Um, well, and, and let's let, pause here for a second hmm? because you'd mentioned that they found these materials. And in the past, we've kind of touched on this a little bit. But they found these materials. They examined the materials. They were said to have odd properties. Like mm -hmm. you could fold them memory up metal. and yeah. crunch them up. It's what we and call then memory all of a sudden metal. they would restore back to their form. Mm -hmm. So like think memory foam, but yeah. metal. Metal, yeah. And uh, what is it that to the Stars Academy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't put know. Put out there. Well, if we, we've traced the story back, you know, it with who it came from, how they came into possession of it, and who they got it from, and where it was claimed to be from, these metamaterials that are now in possession of a government contractor, protected. Allegedly, yes. Prote protected now. Yes, yes, yes. Because to the Stars Academy relinquished these materials. That's, that's on paper. Yeah. And now it's under a government contract and under a third party window that you can't get a FOIA request into. Nope. But these materials were called meta materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're right. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of people who claim that they saw those materials. There was, uh, you know, of course, uh, other things that they claim they saw too. Mm -hmm. Um, You've already heard the stories of the alien bodies, you know, uh, and most that of that claim were, were just test like dummies, right? That they were, That's it was right. like parachuted yeah. dummies. Right. But they yeah. used child sized dummies. Right. Which makes perfect sense to me. All those but, child uh, soldiers that were sending out against the Soviets. Very good. Right? Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I guess they may have had little, little kids maybe like hanging off these balloons at high altitudes, listening for nuclear explosions. Either I that mean, or maybe we had something like, Dwarf force. I don't know. Dwarf man. force. I like that. Yeah. That's Where, nice. you know, you had Gimli and all of his bearded buddies. Cool. And we were just going to hang them from weather balloons and drop them over on so the east. It's just wrong. And I don't even know what you're talking about, but it's still <laughs> wrong. Um, but so anyway, before we go into the whole mogul thing, we're going to talk about Glenn Dennis. Because Glenn is where we get the whole story of... Um, the whole uh, alien thing, right? So according yeah. to Glenn, he is contacted by someone at the, the airfield uh, and wants to know if uh, they can get small child caskets that are, I believe, hermetically sealed. Um, oddly enough, uh, you know, hangs up the phone. Oddly enough, um, he has to take an injured airman to the... Um, the hospital that day to the base hospital that day so he takes him over and as he's over there there's chaos going on as he describes it complete chaos and uh he sees some uh vehicles there and he says that there's some debris in some of the back of these vehicles it looks like tin foil and he also said that that tin foil seemed to have some kind of uh, uh like a writing or hieroglyphs as he as he called it i think in the unsolved mysteries uh interview that they did with him um yep. and we hear now, more about that too because Jesse's son also said that some of that debris that he got to see uh, had some of those writing on it as well. So but then you you fast forward to Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. The, the the acorn, the Kecksburg incident. Yeah, it's got yes. it all around it. Those those glyphs. Yeah, yeah, it does. And uh, we're back to that weird writing, aren't we? So, yeah. uh, you know, you can see a lot of that weird writing, uh, in, in a, uh, you know, in a book that, uh, I did some illustrations for, uh, we'll talk about that at the end, <laughs> but, um, no, I'm just kidding. That's, that's a totally different writing, but is it, um, the thing is there's this weird writing he says that's on there and we have these, these correlations all across the board on some of this material, right? So as he sees this, he goes in and he said he had to get, uh, some stuff signed off. He has to, as you know, when you drop a patient off, you have to get paperwork done. There has to be a paper trail if you drop anything off, right? Yep. So he's he's waiting to get that done. And as he's waiting to get it done, um, 
basically they tell him to get out and he's like, well, I've got to, you know, get my paper, whatever. And, uh, he starts to leave. And as he's leaving, for whatever reason, this really spot on brilliant, uh, commanding officer or whoever he was makes the point to threaten him and tells him basically, you know, uh, that, um, He's uh, he's going to be picking his bones out of the desert, uh, et cetera, et cetera, makes this grave threat to him if he says anything about what he had seen, although he didn't really see anything. Um, and you know what that does to people, typically? It doesn't make them shut up. You know, this is the thing yeah. to understand. It doesn't make people shut up when you threaten them like that. It makes them actually go a little more active and try to expose you, which is exactly because what he it- if you can expose someone publicly quick enough, yep. Then if something happens to you, they lose dead. that leverage, or people will know what happened to you. Exactly. Yep. Yes. Exactly. So, um, you know, there's part one on what not to do when one is trying to cover something up. We have to check that off. Don't threaten someone who knows nothing. Okay. If they don't know anything, they're probably okay. Um, so. As Glenn's leaving, he sees this nurse that he knows, and she tells him to get out. They're, they're, you don't want to be here. There's, you know, you, they're gonna they're gonna arrest you. They're gonna whatever. So he leaves, and uh, later on he contacts the nurse, and meets with her, and she's freaked out. And she tells him, you know, look, I saw these things. They opened. They were in this this room and they opened this bag up and there was these parts in this one bag and you know, it had a hand and the hand had little suction cuff fingers on it. They only had four fingers. Uh, the, the other one was a full body. It had huge, huge cranium. Uh, they were not human. Adamant about the fact these were not humans. Um, she's not the only one. There was another uh, person that came forward. I think it was Pappy Henderson, I believe was his name. He came forward on his deathbed as well and said that what he saw um, when he was out there, those were not those were not human. Um, so it seems that they did pick something up uh, and it kind of got shut up after a while. You know, um, it, it really did. Their little cover up seemed to have worked until. Well. The when everything started coming out about the hermetically sealed caskets, that was one of the things that really stuck out to me because at the time, uh, caskets were only hermetically sealed when there was a reason to hermetically seal them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other than that, mm-hmm. you were just chucked at that point in time in the forties. They'd chuck you in a pond box and in the dirt you went. Yeah. Um, and a hermetically sealed case was generally somebody that had a extremely infectious uh, or unknown disease that they were afraid would be infectious or yeah. really, really wealthy people who didn't want to get grave robbed. Those were going to be the only times you would see hermetically sealed caskets in use at that time. Yeah. So why would you get multiple child sized caskets to be hermetically sealed? Yeah, the uh, exact thing, I've, I've got the little pamphlet here, which uh, is actually a little collector's item uh, that I picked up off of eBay. Uh, this was Glenn's basic documentation of what happened, and he would stick by this until he died. You know, this was this was his story. Uh, and he said that um, basically it was around lunchtime at 1.30 p.m. I, I don't remember the name of the officer. They had the same uh, officer each day. Uh, he asked if they had any baby cast it, caskets, three foot six or four feet hermetically sealed. So, yeah, there's that hermetically sealed thing. Uh, and he bas- he told them, you know, uh, we keep four footers. Uh, he then asked how many we had in stock. And I told him we had two, one in the display room and one in the storeroom. He asked how long it would take to get more. I told him we called uh, the Texas Coffin Company, Amarillo, Texas, uh, which was 200 miles away. They could get some more there, but um, they needed more coffins. Is what we're getting at here, guys. Um, why do they need coffins? And it makes you wonder because, again, you know, nothing happened. Yeah, if nothing happened, it's a weather a, balloon. It's a weather balloon. Why are we getting? Why are we getting coffins for weather balloons? A you're either testing something on children that went 
just as bad, just terribly, not even, I don't even want to think about that. But exactly. Yeah. Or I'd rather have dead aliens. Go ahead. Or B, you've got dead aliens. Yeah. <laughs> There's, I it's mean, also strange which, that they specifically wanted coffins instead of getting, I mean, I guess it's because they could be hermetically sealed, right? Instead yeah. of just building something from yeah. scratch and, you know, doing doing it that way, they had to have specifically coffins because they could be her- hermetically sealed from, like, biological material. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and we have to remember, Jess, um, when we eventually do go to the moon, uh, remember what happens to the astronauts as soon as they come back. They're they're in these, these uh, you know, sealed environments, right? Because we were terrified we we're going to bring something possibly from the moon and, you know, infect the earth and, you know, kill everybody on it, which is another conversation we're having today about the whole Mars thing. That's new in the news as well. Uh, well returning samples. So they're thinking, yeah, we're going to hermetically seal this, but here's my thing. <laughs> Things crashed what? out in the desert. I mean, now, now here, here's another thing though, too. <clears throat> what happened to make them want to hermetically seal this? Like the first thing that comes to mind if you've got some new biological thing, 1947, is not, oh, can this make me sick? I mean, yeah. did somebody get exposed that we're not hearing well, about that we don't know about? Well, when 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 Glenn was in there, uh, he says that uh, there was there was a, a moment where people were coughing, uh, where they were kind of gagging and choking, I believe, something like that. If if you if I remember correctly, uh, either way, they were in distress, and that's you know that's when they started told him to get out, so he he left, you know. But um, who knows? I mean, did they have something that they were fearing? You know, I don't know. I mean, who knows? But the whole thing would somehow all of this would just be just, you know, hearsay and rumor until, you know, a researcher by the name of Stanton Friedman came onto the scene and pretty much just went to town with this. Uh, He interviewed witnesses. uh, He dug up the stories and he put this thing on the map, literally. Uh, Glenn Dennis was one of his his witnesses and as well as, I believe, Pappy. And there were a few others, uh, many, many others, hundreds of people he had interviewed. Uh, all of which said, you know, this was not a weather balloon because the government stuck to the weather balloon story, Joe. It was a weather balloon officially, okay? Oh, yeah. Then something very strange happens. And this was in, uh, I believe, 1994. The government decides to release the Roswell Report. Fact versus fiction. Uh, in this one, that's when they brought up the famous Project Mogul. The classified Project Mogul was a design to detect sound waves in the upper atmosphere from Soviet atom bomb tests by flying microphones on trains of balloons at high altitudes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And all of a sudden, overnight, everyone was a absolute expert on Project Mogul, just to let you know. So today, when we see these web spurts come out, and they're like, oh, that's Bokai. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 That's cool. That's cool. Um, literally, guys, I, this is the same thing that's been happening, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Because I remember this when this happened. I remember this so well. This is just like it was yesterday, actually. When that report was released, and it was in September, I believe, uh, I think is when it was released in 94. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe I might be wrong. It might have been September for the next report, but one of the two. The 94 report, literally, uh, there was uh, the beginning of the Internet, you know, and there was the old sightings forum. And that's what I was on. And it lit up with all of these web spurts the early early web spurts your ancient ancestors web spurts were out there and they said project mogul oh this is what it was it was never a, a weather balloon we were listening for atomic explosions and da, 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 and they knew everything everything about this top secret project that no one had a clue of 48 hours before the web spurts were born that's how it started that was well the one of the first things that the uh, the report actually debunks is the uh, existence of any 
extraterrestrial bodies. Oh, it's flat out fast to debunk like, that. This is on page 12, okay, guys? This is how early into this book this is. And there, mind you, it's page 12, and six of the first pages are all indexing and where to find what. So uh, they're pretty quick. But the thing that gets my attention off this, because when you hear about the Roswell incident to begin with, you're – you're thinking that because the government was able to cover this thing up as easily as they did, that you have a small witness pool, right? Like you, you would think that. Mm -hmm. However, the Army Air Corps interviewed at the time hundreds of witnesses. You have an incident with hundreds of witnesses now. And prior to prior to the actual release of this document, I'm not sure that anywhere had mentioned previously of hundreds of witnesses. Mm -hmm. You only always hear about about six or eight individuals. And this, this particular piece was just the testimony of hundreds of witnesses pertaining to alien bodies, mm -hmm. which to yep. me, what that says is they had to interview everybody on the whole freaking base. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's a, a sub uh, part. See, how, how this whole Roswell report started was um, it was a, um, a, a, I believe it was Stephen Schiff who uh, filed to get some, uh, some of this information released uh, from the General Accounting Office. And one of the uh, things that GAO found, well, there was five things that GAO found. And number one was in 1947, Army regulation required that aircraft accident reports be maintained permanently. OK. And although none of the military service filed a report on the Roswell incident, there was no requirement in 1947 to prepare a report on the weather balloon crash mm -hmm. because it's a weather balloon. So we don't have to report weather balloon crash. You know. Because that's not anomalous at all. That's something no. that's very routine, so it's not something you're going to keep records mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. uh, because you shouldn't care about it. Absolutely. The second part that they found, that the GAO found, although some of the records concerning Roswell activities had been destroyed, there was no information available regarding when or under what authority the records were destroyed. Hence more evidence of a cover-up started right there, right? Um, number three, only two government recordings, records originating in 1947 have been recovered regarding the Roswell incident. This gets a, a, a little murky later on. Uh, a 1947 Federal Bureau of Investigation record revealed that the military had reported that an object resembling a high-altitude weather balloon with a radar, radar reflector had been recovered near Roswell, and here's my favorite one, number five, a 1947 Air Force report noted the discovery of a flying disc that was later determined by military officials to be a radar tracking balloon. I don't know how you can mistake a flying disc from a weather balloon to this day, but apparently uh, the people who were in charge of our national defense at the time, they did just that. Yeah, That's what and we're supposed uh, to believe they, that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. We've seen it all the time. Like we see this kind of behavior with so many different things. Like Jesse was saying earlier, like they they were really just cutting their teeth on this one. They they really got good at it with the development of the internet, and especially once the Roswell report was out, they were professional at this point. So they had a lot of they had a lot of different. Um, uh, you know, military installations around where the incident occurred, um, where they suggest the Roswell Army Airfield, was that the only airfield around there? So wouldn't that be where they would dispatch a weather balloon from? Um, or would they dispatch a weather balloon from another location in the area? So what's what I'm, what I'm asking is, you know, they would say that, it, that they didn't know what it was at first, and then it turned out to be a weather balloon, but wouldn't they have been the ones to dispatch this weather balloon? I would think that they would be. I yep. mean, I would think that they would be. If you've ever been to Roswell, it's literally in the middle of nowhere. I mean, 
you drive for miles and miles across nothing and all of a sudden there it is it's like a mirage it's a little town but yeah i mean i would suspect especially in 1947 there's not going to be that many weather balloon facilities out there i would not think well, the the way these things are deployed anyway is that they you can release them from the air or you can release them from the ground. Mm-hmm. So you still have record of a scheduled release. Well, I mean, the only thing I would think of if we were actually doing if this is what they're saying it was, all right, uh, would it, maybe White Sands, you know, they could have possibly did yeah. something like that, right? Alamogordo, something something like that. If we're listening for, uh, you know. I guess atomic explosions in the upper atmosphere. I mean, it's 1947. I'm pretty sure we're probably the only one doing it uh, out there. It would have probably destroyed our Roa Sundays or, or or whatever, right? I mean, uh, Project Moguls and um, shockwaves. They move through the air. They they right. knock things out. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's why it crashed. Possible. It's been a theory that uh, some of the activity that was going on at the Trinity site could have been responsible for the attraction and the subsequent possible crash. Mm-hmm. There is that theory. There is that theory. I really do uh, advise people to read that book. Um, 1996 would be our next year. Important, pivotal Wait, year. Wait, I thought 95 was because oh, of ma'am. alien autopsy. <laughs> we have to really touch yeah. alien op- okay yeah we do because here's it's, why it's we have to of touch it. it it's part of the lore uh this is by the time you know the story's starting to go now right i mean stanton's been on like everything at this point he's been on uh you know larry king he's been on unsolved mysteries he's been on everything at this point talking about the roswell uh, incident and uh yeah fox and alien autopsy which is just another thing to throw you off the trail because everybody believed it was true and then they're like no this is all fake this is all fake mm-hmm. and it's like oh well it must all be fake you know yes. everything's fake. It, brilliantly played absolutely brilliantly played and there are people to this day Jess, that will argue that this thing was 100 percent legitimate i mean now, i thought blair witch project was real when it first came out but you know <laughs> well it I was think, pretty convincing you know, I think I believed, uh, as far as I remember, I believed that the autopsy was was real at first until uh, there was there was something about it that wasn't quite right, and that um, that threw up red flags. And then I, I really, you know, got the the full, you know, what well, wasn't real after talking to the guy who actually um, helped make it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um it's it, it's not real for, for you guys spoiler alert guys it's the alien autopsy it's not real uh you know i know that uh you know commander Riker told you that it was, it was real but jonathan frakes would never lie to me no well he did <laughs> number one i can't believe that number one did this <laughs> but so with uh, with the alien autopsy thing, it, isn't the body somewhere on display at some like um, prop museum? I have no idea, man. I mean, it should be. I would think. I thought I thought I saw something actually not too long ago um, when I've I've seen bodies that look remarkably like it. Let's yeah. just say that. And uh, there's some really good foam bodies out there uh, that look remarkably like that. So it, it's possible. I'm not sure though. I'll I'll, I'll have to ask. Um, Spiros and, and see if he knows uh, where, yeah. where, where the, the where the that prop are wound at. up. Yeah, at. where the where the prop end up at? Um, because I haven't I haven't checked that out. I really haven't. Well, now the the problem with it though is like it, you can tell what it is, but kind of like the old Ninja Turtle costumes, uh, from where it's foam latex, uh, foam latex and time are not friends. No, they're not. And so now it looks kind of like Alien Autopsy yeah. of the Walking Dead. Yeah, it's probably what's, it's probably what it would look like. I yeah. would imagine. So, uh, yeah. So that was uh, that was that, and then we moved up to uh, nine. This was a very pivotal time from '94 on. After this, the initial report, it didn't stop the Roswell train like the government wanted it to do. Instead, it just sped it up. And with also, the 50th anniversary, what was, anniv- what, was what are the biggest TV shows? 
like late at night, right at, right at this time on Fox. Yes. The X Files. X Files. Right? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't do that. I don't. I, no, we can't, don't do that. Don't do that. We'll we'll probably get sued. Um, it was only three seconds. That's a good point. It has to be twenty. You're right. Oh wait, this free use. Sorry. Carry on. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're right, Jess. The X Files, and you know that's uh, that's another great thing. I I really love that show. And what was really funny is that uh, Chris Carter uh, was a complete skeptic at the time, and now he's he's done like a complete turnaround on that. I mean, you know, he's even saying that there was something there to it now. But uh, yeah, you're right. It was a, a wonderful time. Uh, and uh, X Files, and we we're heading into the Millennium, and I really hated that show. Does anybody remember that show? Millennium. Oh yeah, did not like that show. Did not like that show. That was just a show trying to 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 bounce off of the X Files, and it was yeah. Never mind. That's a different train. We'll go down some other day, maybe never. So in 1996, um, a great thing happened in Roswell. This is when all of the locals uh, organized a fun event to celebrate the anniversary of the crash. That was the very first one. And uh, it was a little thing, a little festivities that they did. They had little UFO theme box races and they had a, a derby down Main Street and whatnot. And then something else happened in 1996. Does anyone else remember what happened in 1996? There was a very, very famous incident, UFO incident that happened in 1996. Well, I was in... Uh, sixth grade, so I remember it. Well, okay, then. <laughs> well, it was in 96. I'm sorry, I lied to you guys. It was in 97, so maybe that might throw you. Does that help? 97, so you're you're another grade. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're talking about the Phoenix Lights. There it is. Yes, yeah. So, I was about to say, I was, I was nine, so 1997, <laughs> 1997 the Phoenix Lights. I remember the Phoenix Lights, though. Yeah, that was 97. Yes. So in 1997, the Phoenix Lights. You know, what else is getting ready to happen in 1997 is the 50th anniversary of Roswell. And uh, right before the 50th anniversary of Roswell, in March of 13th, 1997, the Phoenix Lights incident takes place. Yeah. And then we had that fiasco with, uh, with the governor, you know. Yeah. Marching the, out the alien in handcuffs. Yeah. That yeah. wonderful, that wonderful thing. So at this point, and now, now, thankfully, this guy's recanted all of that stuff and come out saying he actually was a witness himself, but yes. was just trying to ease the nerves of the public. Yes. And but did it in the worst incident. way possible. Yeah, yes. that's another incident where they blamed it on a weather balloon, as usual. Yeah, flares, weather balloons, uh, anything that'll, yeah. that'll fly. Today it's drones. It would have been drones if we had them. Yeah, yeah because that's the, the popular thing. Um, so anyway. Uh, we have the uh, the incident with that. I believe that there were, uh, gosh, it was it was everywhere. You know, like UFO fever had had kicked in. Roswell fever, in particular, had kicked in, and uh, it was it was pretty much on everything you watched. Well, I guess the Air Force was like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta try this again. So they released another report. This one was the end all be all. Roswell report, case closed. We didn't do it right the first time with uh, fact and fiction. Wait, this is the case closed, guys. This is it. Oh, wait, there were bodies, but they weren't aliens. But you said that there were no bodies. Yeah. Oh, but there were. Now there were there were bodies. Now now they were crash test dummies. We were doing these remarkable tests to see how far uh, we could drop. Children <laughs> from weather balloons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep paying those taxes, everybody. That's right. That's I mean, right. You can't make those this are your up. Fine tax dollars at work. <laughs> We're you dropping. You cannot. You can't Child make this up. From upper orbit, just to see what happens. I want to know how much that cost. Can you imagine how much that project cost? Ah, oh, well, you're probably talking custom order mannequins. Uh, yep. talking, you know, if to do that, like yeah, they just, did not just go down to the Woolworths and, and take the mannequins out of the display case, these were no. crash test dummies, yeah, they cost a lot of money. I don't even want to think about how much money that was, but what makes I don't want to think about how much money it costs to cover this whole mess up. Oh, god, 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. Yes. Yes. But what blows my mind here is, you know, well, okay. So there were bodies, right? Yeah. I don't know about that because in one of the more disturbing parts uh, that I found uh, about this, the report discussed, discusses the result of this exhaustive research and identifies the likely source of the claims of alien bodies at Roswell. Contrary to allegations, many of the accounts appear to be descriptions of unclassified and widely publicized Air Force scientific achievements. Crash test dummies been dropped from space. Uh, other descriptions of bodies appear to be actual incidents in which Air Force members were killed or injured in the line of duty. In what world? When did any of, did any of you guys ever see... I don't know what they, they show these guys, but I've never seen any any small three and a half, four foot tall Air Force pilots. No, that, no, we, we mean, don't have those. There's actually height requirements and you have to be over. I think it's a uh, five, two and under six foot three. So it just blows my mind. It was a um, different time. People were smaller back then. <laughs> Um, aliens observed in the New Mexico desert were actually anthropomorphic test dummies that were carried aloft by U.S. Air Force high altitude balloons for scientific research. Uh, the unusual military activities, I would say they were unusual. I agree with that quote. Activities in the New Mexico desert were high altitude research balloon launch and recovery operations. Reports of military units that always seem to arrive shortly after the crashes because we had to put those in there too, right? Because there's always a report that well, we were out there, and then all of a sudden the government showed up and told everybody to leave because we might see their crash test dummies because those are top secret. Yeah, those those super high, high expensive, high-tech crash dummies. That... But they did actually address the fact that, you know, there's, there's rumors that, you know, the rumors, I guess, right? The whole allegation that the government's showing up and telling people to leave. Rumors. Yeah. So they, yeah, rumors. So they actually said, uh, oh, yeah, well, uh, the flight saucers to retrieve the, the, the saucer and crew, they're actually just accurate descriptions of Air Force personnel engaged in anthropomorphic dummy recovery operations. If you or anyone you know was a member of the United States Air Force and are clear to talk about uh, being a anthropomorphic dummy recovery operator or specialist, please contact the show because I have a million questions for you. Now, I can tell you how how we did it when we were doing crash recovery and retrieval um, because, you know, instead of getting a military-grade crash dummy, they just used a military-grade dummy and stuck one of our guys in the crash debris and we had to yank him out of it <laughs> and we just used real people and okay stuck well all right then case closed they're right yeah. that was it they, they were dropping dummies. <laughs> air force and, dummies i from... mean the, there's uh you to, to go in um one of the things that they do is they do a, a fuel cell recovery too and we use real people for that as well and you have a rope tied to your foot so just to show you how little they care they will yank you through this small corridor of metal ribs on the inside of an aircraft wing by a rope on your foot and you just have to not die um <laughs> <laughs> and and then you do the, the crash recovery training is not much different. You just hope you don't get drug across something that is really, really sharp. Well, after 1947, they figured out how expensive these freaking child dummies were. So they needed to throw your asses in there. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they it's hard to tell how much money they, they dropped all those those weather well, look balloons. How many problems stemmed from these child dummies. Look at the, the cover ups, conspiracy UFOs. But, Paratourism coming out of this, so they're just Good done Lord. with the dummy situation. Look, it, it was just the can of worms they did not expect. No, they did not <laughs> expect that. You're absolutely right. So, what's amazing about this final report, guys, is it totally contradicts all of that first report. Yeah, it's a complete night and day from the other report. Complete. Its executive summary actually states two two parts, two very important parts, and they re they did that because of 
uh, the whole, hey, look, there were aliens recovered, you know, which was going around. Thanks to that, I got to say it, thanks to alien autopsy. And for, you know, that actually did help people kind of understand there was a little bit of truth to that in that it kind of pointed the finger and said, look, something may have been recovered, right? So whether the rest of it's lies, it was the beginning of the lie sandwich. But um, the executive summary is one, uh, 1956. I, okay, I'll try to read this without laughing. A 1956 KC-97 aircraft accident in which 11 Air Force members lost their lives and two. A 1959 manned balloon mishap in which two Air Force pilots were injured. Both of those were never mentioned in the first report whatsoever. Never once was it mentioned. But this is where your bodies came from, guys. Those two incidents. They were, it was a uh, claim of alien uh, bodies were just, they were just a combination of these two unfortunate incidents that involved actual pilots. I'm, I can't. That's that. just a really hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Like, how, make that make sense. Anybody out there that has, has read the second Roswell report case closed and, and believes it, make that make sense. Because... You're not going to have that kind of thing happen. Um, normally, when you've got crashes like this, one, they're not taking place in the same area. So they're taking bodies to different locations. Mm -hmm. uh, they triage these things, too, and will take bodies to different places just for processing. Um, so make that make sense. Anybody, give it, give it a shot down in the comments, please. Well. You know, the bodies were allegedly taken to a uh, right field as well. And so was the wreckage. And then it was taken yeah. to uh, Texas as well. Why are we taking balloon wreckage across the country? Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? What, like, because these balloons, it was just like a big, uh, big, massive rubber latex kind of balloon. Like, why would you need to transport that? What, what reason would you have to not take it to the closest installation and dispose of it there rather than transport it to, to Wright Airfield, which would later become Wright Pat, and or into Texas, like what hundreds and hundreds of miles away? All right, because Field you're lying, was, <laughs> because you're lying. Thank you. Uh, you know, Wright Field was also, uh, you know, the uh, what was the foreign technologies division, right, or, or something yeah. of that nature. I'm I can't remember the exact Still is, yeah. So they would get the cool stuff from foreign technologies. So I'll I'll buy it. Let's play the data game. If this wasn't aliens, what was this, guys? We're looking, if it wasn't aliens, yeah. if it wasn't a UFO, we're looking at some kind of an advanced aircraft that was crashed into our airspace and onto our soil from a uh, threat. So at the time, 47, we're looking, we're looking at uh, anybody in the Pacific um, that, that might have some kind of grudge um, mm -hmm. based off the turnout of World War II. We've got uh, anybody from, because this is, you know, we're looking, we're pre-Cold War. You know, we're just just out of World War II. Um, and we're, we don't have any kind of nuclear arms uh, threat at this point. We were the nuclear power. So the only thing I can think is some kind of advanced aircraft that was made out of very, very flimsy material. Mm. Okay. I mean, I guess it could happen, right? I mean, or or they were trying to actually. We had some some uh, spies from from the Pacific floating in weather balloons, and they were just really small, and the balloons popped, and down they came, raining people. I don't know. I mean, I've I've played with this thing for a long time. I even thought about the whole, you know, could it have been a cover up of uh, uh, was it a, a Japanese uh, balloon bomb? I mean, those those were a possibility. Uh, you know, we didn't want people to know that the Japanese had released balloon bombs. That was a real thing, by the way. If you don't know that, go look it up. It's it's a very real thing. Um, they actually uh, set aloft something like a thousand 
uh, I don't even know how many thousands there were, like 9,000 of these things or something. Most of them never reached the shores, but some did. Uh, one did fall, actually, in I think it was 1944 in Wyoming and killed some people. Um, but they were just random bombs with the balloons on them that the Japanese released during the war. And they were still floating around out there. So could it have been something like that? They were just trying to cover up. I don't think so. I'm, at that time, so. at that time, you know, you're looking at like three, four years had passed. Helium's not going to hydrogen's not going to uh, no, no kind of lighter than air gas is going to keep a balloon afloat that long. Yeah. Um, it's just not feasible. Yeah, well, I agree with you. I'm just looking at all these possibilities that, you know, some of these web spurts had thrown out for years. Um, you know, there was there was there was so many theories that, you know, they actually tested a saucer shaped uh, landing vehicle that it, it had dropped and it had crashed into the ground and all that. They tried every way they could to basically uh, come up and stifle all these these different accounts of all these witnesses that were coming forward. And there were so many witnesses that did come forward on this. And if it had been like, you know, 10 people guys or something like that, I mean, maybe, maybe it was all just a hoax, but no, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And something came out of the sky. Something was covered up for whatever reason. And again, as we said, covered up very badly. Extremely badly. Well, I, I think they learned a lot from um, their mis. Well, no, I'm lying. The government I never learns learned. anything from any of its no. mistakes. Ah. This carried on. This carried on <laughs> through the 90s. Um, so yeah, they just it continued to snowball into more of a, a cluster, you know. Oh, so. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And an, a great example would have been the Phoenix Lights, actually. You know, because you had the uh, initial sighting and then you had the stage sighting, which take, takes place, you know, several hours later, which was flares, you know, and and then the, the attempt to actually pretty much scrub away any of those original videos of the first sighting. Anyone who actually researched that thing knows that those were there were two separate sightings on, on that. So, uh, you know, they didn't learn a lesson there. Um just recently we had the issue with the whole uh the signal that the chinese picked up you know that that whole thing they did the same thing they're like oh we got a signal oh wait no we didn't and by the way we just let the guy loose who who told you that we did he doesn't work for us anymore nothing to see here <laughs> thanks <laughs> thanks yeah. for thanks for looking and uh, we bye yeah uh somebody keep an eye on that guy if you can <laughs> yeah yeah we would we would like to talk to him too <laughs> but no guys this is the this is the thing that we see that these they've done repeatedly they've done this so many so many times now they've done this and it is absolutely laughable that we think that not only one um they're telling the truth who could who would think that they were telling the truth at this point i mean if you think they're telling the truth at this point you're delusional. I mean, I, I hate to break it to you, but there's so many lies that were told about Roswell that I don't even know what's true anymore. Do I think there were aliens that crashed out there? Who knows at this point? That's how absolutely messed up the story is. Yeah, it's uh, it's become extremely convoluted. That's the bad part. And uh, the only... The only person that we could actually talk to that has spoke to any of those guys just passed away a couple years ago. Yeah, um, because no one else has really, um, no one. No there's one picked no up one. the mantle. Nope, there's no one. So, you know, those witnesses are gone. And this is another reason that we, we, we tell people, you know, come forward with your stories. Let's record your stories. Let's make sure that they're entered because they may help someone in the future. Uh, because goodness sakes, can you imagine if he wouldn't have got those stories? No. Can you imagine? This would have just been swept under the rug. It would have been that would it was done. It was it over. would have worked. It would have worked. It would have absolutely worked. But it didn't work because of people like Stanton. Actually, it didn't work because of Stanton. That's 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 why it didn't work. Not people like, but because of him. And for that reason, uh, 
Mr. Friedman will be him and Marcel, actually, Jesse Marcel, will be the first inductees into the new Roswell Walk of Fame, which they will be unveiling this year, this July, at the festival, which is just amazing. Every year they're going to induct new people into the, the Walk of Fame, which is absolutely amazing. Um, this is, I bet this Travis is, is going to be up next year. Oh, he's got to be at some point. I mean, come on. I, I would hope so. I mean, this is a pioneer now, right? So, yep. and and we don't say that lightly. It's a very there's a lot of legends that are that are being born at this point. It's a good time to be around to see ufology, because this is akin to back in our uh, you know the, the old uh, flying saucer days, you know the yep. Roswell days, the saucer mania. We always said, you know, wouldn't it be cool to to have been there? Well, we're there. We're we're there right now. So uh, this is just a different a different part of it. So you know, genie's out of the bottle. I think as Jess said, and uh, I don't think she's going back in it this time. Yep. So what do you guys think about Roswell? I want to know. Jess. Jesse, you're up. Ah, I'm always up. Um, <laughs> I, I think it was a cover up. I mean, it's it's clearly a cover up. There's just there's too many holes in this, and they've changed their story so many times that. Um, when they, when you do that, you don't, you're obviously, it's obviously false. It's obviously false. Um, so this is just another example of them covering things up. And I, I, for some reason, I have a feeling since we're getting this rollout of UFO information, uh, is there going to be a Roswell disclosure that eventually comes up? Um, or are they going to just come like continue to ignore it? So, but that if they do admit to, if if they do admit to something went on at Roswell or that what we think happened at Roswell actually happened, that's a step beyond unidentified craft. Uh, because in, in this story, you have actual bodies. So that's a step beyond unidentified craft that you can write off as being um, a foreign enemy or something like that. This is, there's actually bodies involved in this, and there was a chain of command with those bodies, and there is probably still genetic material available within the archives of the government uh, of those bodies. It's not just photos and videos of flying objects. This is actual genetic material of a, another life form. Well, my take goes back to where i was at earlier with it uh definitely being a cover-up but going back to the meta materials um you've got a uh as long as you take it for face value what it is you've got a trail that was laid down by linda moulton howe about the possession of this meta material that was uh given to her and art bell who was the uh, coast to coast am host um, they were given this meta material in 1996 by a uh, U.S. Army sergeant who uh, to this day remains anonymous, but she sold the meta materials to Tom DeLong, and Tom DeLong then put those meta materials into the property of the U.S. government. And we don't know any money, monetary exchange that took place at that point. We just know that $35,000 changed hands between her and Tom DeLong. Um, but with that all being said, you know, it is claimed that these meta materials were from a UFO crash. If one is to believe that we were in possession of said materials and then they were given to the public somehow, you would think that the government would do its absolute best to try to track those down and get them back in their possession, which this seems to be the case. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm leaning cover up because it's really one is really 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 bad, and uh, there there's no um, that there's no list of excuses that have ever made sense that they threw at this thing from dummy Joe all the way up to, you know, the uh, high altitude balloons or the, uh, the Japanese releases of balloon bombs. None of it, none of it adds up. None of it comes together the way the whole story needs to be wrapped up for it to all make sense. 
Absolutely agree. And I think that there's some important clues on the Roswell incident, the Kecksburg incident, the Randall Chamboris incident. I think that there those things are common factors. That whole there's the parallels with all of those. Well, there's the hieroglyphics. There's the you know that weird writing that people have yep. seen on them. You know the Socorro, New Mexico incident. Also a, a diagram on the side of the craft. There, these are common threads that we see that are they're they're going through all of these different these different sightings, these different reports. And I'm sorry, I just don't think people are making this stuff up. I really don't. Um, as as for the alien thing, yeah, possibly. If those were aliens, there was something. They found something out there. I just don't know what they were. I mean, I don't know what they were. So, you know, the jury's out on that one, guys, still. Yeah, I it think. Was uh, it was a cover-up. That's what I we're think saying. we're all all in agreement. We've, we've got a cover-up here uh, and a, a not good job. one. A bad <laughs> job. A good bad one. job covered it up. So, uh, so Jess, yes. are you ready to take us home? Ah, well, let's take it home. Let's uh, hop in our little weather balloon, take our little child-sized dummies, drop them from high atmospheric levels, and throw us in little tiny child coffins. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode about the Roswell incident and the subsequent cover-up of the Roswell incident. Um, Let us know what you guys think occurred, um, what your theories are, and um, let us know in the comments below what your opinion is on that incident and that cover-up. And what other cover-ups we need to be looking into that the government has perpetrated against its citizens. So, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe everything Wild and Weird. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when the next episode of Wild and Weird Radio comes out. You can always follow me at Helmet Jesse at Instagram and then check out my channel, Helmet Holler, on YouTube. I have a three part series on the Land Between the Lakes that you really need to check out. And uh, let me know what you think about that. Uh, go binge always- all three. <laughs> yes, we have to watch all three. Uh, make sure that you go check out wildandweirdwv.com for all the upcoming events and uh, news and information about the guys at Wild and Weird West Virginia. You can follow Ron at Lanham Ron on Instagram. You can follow Joe Purdue at Stenwalker Sculpts. And there is a Facebook group that is uh, the Wild and Weird Facebook group where everybody talks about ongoing incidents and theories and all kinds of crazy wild and weird stuff. So again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you're listening to this on a podcast aggregator, make sure you download the episode as well as listen to it because that helps us go up in the numbers. And make sure you give us a rating, five stars only, or you can just GTFO. So again, thank you guys so much for listening, watching, and joining us on another week of Wild and Weird Radio. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies because you never know when a child-sized crash test dummy is going to fall out of the sky and ruin your weekend. This is true. That's true. Word. Word. Yes. <laughs>